Hello everybody and welcome to another exciting list video. This week we're going to be talking about the five best investigators for new players. This is a video I said that we were going to make a while ago, then I forgot about it, and luckily someone on our Discord channel uh, kindly reminded me of it. Uh, on this note, I guess I should say, if you haven't joined our Discord and you want to join the Arkham Horror discussion, we do have a channel just for Arkham Horror the card game. You can come join down in the description. I believe there is a Discord link, and if there is not, uh, and it's not there, yell at me, and I'll put it in. Uh, we're going to be doing one from each class today, Guardian, Seeker, Rogue, Mystic, and Survivor, and we're going to be talking about why we think these are good investigators for new players. So I'm going to just dive right in, and uh, Travis, for a Guardian, who do we choose? Uh, pick Zoe. So, the reason we pick Zoe, she's got easy deck building, blue cards, and then five other things can be whatever you want. Uh, she's got a good brain score in addition to a strong fist score. So uh, you don't have to worry about the encounter deck too much, or as much as a lot of other characters do. She's got six brain, which is a little bit above curve for uh, monster fighters, mm -hmm. especially in blue. And then uh, she has a nice easy ability where just whenever you get a monster, you get money. Mm -hmm. And all you do is kill stuff. Uh, she can use a variety of uh, blue weapons. You can go for like a melee focus build or a gun focus build or basically whatever the new player thinks is interesting. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there's just like not a ton of nuance to her. You just you get money, you play guns, you shoot stuff. I think something that works really well for Zoe and new players is I've played with a few people who from other Arkham games they have this lingering feeling where monsters are scary. And yeah, you know, sometimes monsters kill you and that's unfortunate, but you have to deal with monsters in this game. And Zoe's ability just naturally tells the player playing Zoe that it's okay, you can um, engage this investigator and a good, uh, engage this enemy and a good thing happens when yeah. you do that, right? Yeah, it's a good point. So it encourages you to get in there and pick a fight. Yeah. Here, I guess I can even just get like their text box here so people can read these as well while they're up. Um, yeah, and I think that's kind of like a, a mindset that um, it helps teach players and that's exciting. And also she has four fist, which is an easy number to bump up to five. And then when you get like five up, you're like confidently like dealing with things that show up. Hmm. And then it also like, something that I like about her too is when you're playing with new players, uh, when they can learn combos themselves through the game, that's rewarding them to think that they can solve problems now and gain tempo from it. So the first time someone who's just playing realizes when they engage an enemy with Zoe and they have the cross and it's like a rat's and they can just kill it for free, in their mind then they go, that's awesome, right? Because they're like, I, I've dealt with the enemy without making a test. And then their mind can start moving to the point, how can I do this in other ways as well, right? And then that's how you end up winning, when you can uh, squeeze as much tempo out of the game as physically possible. Yeah. Sick. All right, who is our seeker investigator? Bryn, I'll pass this one to you. We got Ursula Downs, the explorer. Uh Honestly, you could probably pick just about any Seeker Investigator and be pretty okay. Uh, they're, like, fairly Pretty's linear, but also... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, you're not Kent's you head, you player, Amanda Sharp, Joe Diamond. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think Joe Diamond like, and Amanda Sharp are the only sure, exception. Sure, there's two, there's two, of, them yeah. there's two of them you can't. Yeah. There's two of them There's, like, can't. four of them you can't. I'm trying to think of the other four. The other two are. Not Amanda, Amanda, Joe, Mandy, Norman. Oh, Mandy's easy. You just put the deck together. For oh, me. yeah, Mandy. I think, Man well, she has five books, so no matter what, that's easy, uh, right? Yeah, right. Like, so, yeah, Nor Norman and, and like, they have, they have five books. Yeah, when you have a five it's in a stat, working. that's... But Ursula is here because she has a relatively small card pool, which makes building, if you've never played the game before, building a deck is a bit of a daunting task. Uh, there are a lot of cards in the game now. Uh, and uh, if you haven't been playing the entire time, or aren't, uh, you know, picking up the game piecemeal, that can be a little, that can be a little bit, uh, a little bit scary. 
Uh, Ursula is here because her reaction effect, if, as you move, you get to investigate for free. Uh, and a star effect that often is more than plus one. Just plus one. Anyway, mm -hmm. it's always only plus one, but sometimes it does other things too. Uh, just the... Uh, the play pattern is fairly obvious from looking at the card. Like the things you want to be doing, you want to be moving, you want to be investigating. You got cards to help you do both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and once again, the thing that I like kind of like follows that same line where it's teaching how you can compress your actions and do multiple things as well to look for further advantage in other ways to then teach the player, hey, you know, that's good. Uh, the, the big downsides that I find for Ursula is that a lot of the new players I've played with um, don't like her weakness uh, because <laughs> even though like you can work around it and it's really soft sometimes, uh, when you're just starting out, it seems like an impossible task, right? And then it deals too horror when you don't do it, right? Yeah, and you shuffle it back into your Yeah, bag. so like... Yeah, that's the part that people I've yeah. played, like, really don't like. They're like, how come I, I can't, so I can't ever get rid of it. It's like, like, yeah, you can. Yeah. And, like... <laughs> sort of. It is, it, it, like, I understand that dauntiness. And even, like, the idea of taking two horror is like, oh, my God, that's going to kill me, right? Um, but it can kind of also, over time, it's like a weakness that you can learn to work with, right? And, like, take advantage of. And then... Ultimately, you can learn that, well, later in the, in the, in the scenario, it's going to be harder to benefit from it, right? But early on, if you draw this early on, you're just going to like, I'm going to move to this location anyway to grab a clue. I'm going to choose that one. So it kind of yeah. like teaches that idea of beating your um, weakness, which or playing around your weakness, or as uh, I think Travis said in a previous video, like turning your weakness into a strength with that kind of thing and like, just having it not slow you down is super, super nice. And this, in this case, you're not really turning it into a strength. You're just like mitigating it. Yeah, you're like, you're, yeah. yeah. It's asking you to do something you're going to do. Anyway. Yeah, you're like, eat it, call the No, I don't care about you. Okay, let's go to our rogue one. And Brent, I'm going to pass this one to you again because you are a resident rogue expert. Who do we choose for this one? So this is possibly the only real good choice for a new player because rogues want to do things in strange often rule-breaking ways uh, jenny on the other hand she gets two money every turn mm -hmm. she's got threes she's got an eight and a seven she's got no clear weaknesses uh no clear strengths either but you know that's what your cards are for yeah plus she has a like her weak her weakness is like her weakness can actually be dealt with any by anybody. It doesn't have to be you. Uh, admitted and admittedly, her signature asset is basically a glorified skill card, but sometimes it's not. Yeah, it's just like a, it's a yeah. low. Um, I think we all agreed that rogue is like our least recommended color to start for a new player, um, and. But she's just baseline easy. It's not going to be overwhelming with the information you get from her, right? It's not like you give a new player Luke Robinson and they're like, what? What do you mean? Like, when, when do, do I, I make do this choice, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, the, the trouble the trouble I've encountered with Green trying to teach some of, uh, some of my family how to play this game is often that they think that all of their cards are bad <laughs> because they're bad without the part of the deck that makes them good right mm -hmm. like uh, one of them wanted to play uh, i forget what the investigator was but they were playing a big money deck and i was like this money talks card is pretty good and two scenarios later they were like this card's bad i just get i, I only get to commit it for a for a book symbol and that's all it does I'm like man eh, sure you know it can be a lot better than that but I th it, re it requires a uh, like like a lot of the good green cards, it requires you to know what you're trying to do with them. Yeah, and I think with Jenny as well, a good path to take is... Because probably when you're playing with a new player, this is how it's been for me. I don't know how it's been for Travis and Bryn. But like for the first few games, I would like guide deck building, right? Like I'd be like, so what do you want to do? 
what can we get you there? Here are some options, right? And I think with Jenny, it would need that facilitation even further to make sure the deck's focused. Because like a good player who's been playing for a while can take Jenny as kind of like the jack of all trades and can like make that work. But for a new player, if you just say you're going to be okay at everything and a lot of the times you're going to feel like your back's against the wall, it's not going to be good. However, if you have a Jenny that you can like build with them to focus on a specific thing and take advantage of it, I think it would work better. So if you wanted to do Jenny for a new player, or if you yourself are trying out Jenny for a new player, you should highly, you should focus on building a Jenny deck that's more focused than just jack of all trades. And then like your other stats then become... Um, not bad versus like a one in your brain as opposed to a, like a, yeah, as opposed to a one in your brain, right? Like having just a three in your brain is fine or like a three foot is fine, but having like a getting a five in fist and then having a fighting Jenny, that's a lot better for having a goal for your deck when you're just starting out with her. Sweet. All right, who's up next? I'll talk about this one. This one is our mystic choice and that is Jacqueline Fine. Let's see if I have an investigator card for her. Let me quickly just do 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 do. I do! Thank goodness. Okay, so um, Jacqueline Fine is very good for a lot of reasons, but the biggest reason is just her ability. Um, having a bigger sway over the token cup, uh, it does a few things. The first thing it does is it makes the person succeed more. Uh, which is good. They want, when a new player is playing this game, they want to pass more than they want to fail. They're not like us where we have been playing Arkham Horror 2nd Edition for years and we understand that just getting punched in the face is normal for this game and not a bad thing, right? A lot of people when they're playing this game, they want to feel a win and Jacqueline finds a good way to do that because then in the future you can be like, all right, so no Jacqueline, it's going to be a bit harder, but how can we, you know, how can we get punched in the face and then stand back up and keep going for the next few rounds against Cthulhu, right? Uh, another thing is uh, Mystics, their relevant stat is brain. So uh, having five brain is great for a new player. As I said, as we said previously for like when we talked about the Seekers, um, even like honestly, like going back to the rogues, if a, a new player really wanted to play Tony Morgan, they could probably get away with it. His bounties are a bit confusing and abstract when you're just starting out, but having five in fist means you're going to do your job well. Like guys with Jacqueline, having five in brain means you're going to do your job well, even further with the ability that you have. In addition, the part I like about Jacqueline that new players may also like um, is feeling like they're helping, right? Because you know when you're playing with a new player, um, they're going to be doubting a lot of their actions. And they're going to probably keep that to themselves too. They're going to be like, is this the right thing to do? How do I know it's the right thing to do? So I just don't know what to do and I'm going to kind of freeze up. What Jacqueline does is it allows the players to feel like they could potentially help someone else at their table. And then that in turn will make them give some confidence and realize what are some of the correct decisions to make. Um, like how Zoe teaches people that enemies are okay, Jacqueline Fine teaches people that the Mythos Cup is scary, but when you start having control over it or learning the numbers and math in it, that's also less scary. I feel like I've said a lot. Does anyone else want to add anything for Jacqueline here? Yeah, the only... my uh, I'm having my mother play Jacqueline Fine right mm -hmm. now, actually. Uh, and the only thing that I, the only thing that I, she struggles with is remembering to use uh, Jacqueline's psychic power once a turn. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you get to you sit there, and you, it's it's a lot better to be telling someone like, "Oh, your card also does this." Yeah, you could use it if you want to. Then, like, why aren't you doing the thing that you need to do? Yeah, yeah, actually, like or that's. Like, that's really important to how to like talk to a new player when they're playing the game. Mm -hmm. You never want to be like, yo, yo, why haven't you used Jacqueline's ability? Come on, man. Right. Like, just be like, hey, you know, there's a, if you wanted to use this here, this would be a great like, like, do you, do you want to use your ability here? Yeah. Are you worried about this test because you still have your ability? Right. Um, wording it is also very important for how that's done. Sweet. Let's move on to our survivor who is uh, Stella Clark. Hey, Jacqueline, get out of here. Also Jacqueline Fine. Get out of here. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I just talked a bunch. Does, do one of you guys want to take Stella? And then I'll join in with my thoughts after I just talked about Jacqueline a bunch, so. I can, but yeah, I will. So this is Stella. Um, she's good for new players because she makes the game easy. Mm -hmm. um, it reward She rewards you, or quote, quote, rewards you for failing, uh, giving you an extra action. She's got nice big heart and brain stats there. Her actual doing stuff stats are kind of lackluster, but um, and then she comes with three copies of Neither Rain or Snow, which just like let the new player issue any repercussions for failing a test. Yeah. And the turn, new players kind of, I've noticed, don't mind not doing so much during their turn as long as they don't have bad things happen to them. They, and uh, that's exactly what Stella does. Um, I mentioned this before we started the recording, but uh, the only downside that I really see to Stella for new players is like highway blindness sort of deal mm -hmm. where they have to actually play the game and have repercussions afterwards that might make it exceptionally uh, tough on them. Because mm -hmm. like when you're playing Stella, you kind of just don't care about anything. Yeah, <laughs> and it's true. It's 100% <laughs> true. And like yeah. that point as well, like... Um, I think, like, when you're playing with new players, if they do play Stella first, exactly what Travis was saying, you should warn them the next time. Like, I'm gonna just, like, just be like, hey, just so you know, it's gonna suck a bit more to fail, right? Like, it's not, you're not Stella anymore. You're someone new. But you can look at all these new strengths that you have to make up for it, right? Like, look, you have a five in book. That's incredible, right? Um, yeah, if you really want to avoid that, you could, like, have them play with less copies of Neither Rain Nor Snow. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> or, like, don't give them rec the recursion options, but the recursion options are pretty fun. So yeah. And I, I, mean, I, like, I would personally rather give, just stick them with, like, one copy of Neither Rain Nor Snow. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of also just kind of our general thoughts on Stella, too. <laughs> she has too many copies of Neither Rain Nor Snow. Um, I'm not ooh. saying that the first time that I played, well, the second time I played this game with my brother, he wanted to play Rex. And I told him that Rex was misprinted. And was supposed to say that he had to he could only use his effect once per turn. <laughs> but like I I maybe did do that. That <laughs> is so funny to me. Oh, uh, so like, that's that's an option you could take on Stella Clark. Like, yeah, it's not supposed to say three, it's supposed to say one. <laughs> they won't know any better. And I mean honestly, you'll pro they'll probably still do fine, right? Like yep. the Three copies of Neither Rain Nor Snow is kind of excessive. Like, it is uh, It is a little bit much. Yeah. They still have to feel good about getting an extra action when they fail. Yeah. Like, that's, that's like, yeah. the main feature that makes Stella nice for new players, right? Yeah. Because, like, the, the other thing as well is, like, you even saw it with me when I was playing Stella. But I, also, I mean, I also, like, am, like, operating the cameras in Tabletop Simulator and trying to tell jokes while playing the game. <laughs> yeah. But, like, you might need to remind players when they get their additional action. But, like, once again, that's kind of just, like, they don't have the knowledge that you do in this game, yeah. right? So. Yeah, or even give them give them a die or something to count the actions they've taken or the actions they have remaining, however they find more intuitive. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah help, help keep track of that, because sometimes you do, like, you get to, sometimes you get to, in quotation marks, fail your skill test during the mythos phase. Mm-hmm. And then you have you have to remember that for when it's your turn because maybe you're not going first. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and that can be a little tough. I think she does do a very solid job of teaching someone that failing a test, the tests aren't that scary. Yeah. Like, sure. Sometimes the game's like, here's a minus five, or this token's red. Uh, that happens. It happens. Yeah, and then uh, and like going with what Travis said, it's kind of like about. At that point, then telling the player, like, so you're going to learn from this that, like, failing is not the end of the world, but you also can't get, uh, you can't accept the fact that you're always going to get a benefit from failing. That's very much like a Stella or a focused thing, right? Like, it's not every day. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. All right. Well, those are who we think were the five best inv investigators for new players. Uh, if you want us to do a video of the five worst investigators for new players, that's going to be an easy video for us to do. Uh, just like, you know, Calvin, Preston, yada, yada, yada. Uh, let us know in the... Lola. <laughs> I mean, Lola. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, just let us know in the comments if you want to see a video like that. We are going to be going back to finishing. We have, I think, one or two more of our top five cards that do X. We're going to have to get to those as well. This was just a small video that I, I said I was going to do a long time ago, and we finally actually did it because, once again, big thank you to the person in our Discord channel. Let us know in the comments if there's any other list videos you want to see. Have a good one, everybody, and as always, GG's.